let's start the first topic for this session in this topic we'll be seeing what is leverage all about what is the risk which we talk about in the last session we did a small illustration of modigliani and miller approach and in modigliani and miller approach we have seen that there's a risk element as well leverage personal leverage or corporate leverage as well when an investor tries to raise funds so when he how does he switch his holdings from one company to the other company so a leverage element was there as well in this session we'll go deep into this leverage part now if you see how profits are distributed in a company as i told you the finance student keep the table handy all the time you'll be needing for all these sessions and all the units which will come across now when you see how the profits are distributed if you see sales now if you see absorption costing point of you see marginal costing point of you sales minus variable cost leads to contribution contribution minus fixed cost leads to ebit this is marginal costing point of which studied in accounting in your previous semester if you see normal other accounting how profits are calculated if you see sales minus cost of goods sold gives you gross profit gross profit minus operating expenses gives you ebit so you arrive at the same ebit whatever method you take it forward right earnings before interest and tax now see profits are distributed if you focus on the marginal costing method if you see we dividing the cost into two elements the variable cost and fixed cost the variable cost is directly related to your sales higher will be the sales higher will be the variable cost lower the sales lower will be the variable cost no sales happening no variable cost for example if i'm a shoe manufacturing company i took a, a place on rent and i start manufacturing shoes now when i start manufacturing shoes i see there are certain expenses which are variable in nature which are fixed in nature for example i get a new order for shoes i get a new higher order for shoes what will happen i need to buy room more raw materials i need to buy pay more wages to the laborer so directly related to sales i won't get any order for sure why will i buy raw material and why will i pay labor their wages so variable cost is directly related to your sales but if you see when you're manufacturing shoes even if you don't get any order for a shoe for a particular period of time still you have to incur is the fixed cost the fixed cost remain the same irrespective of your output for example i don't get any output or any order for one or two months so still i have to manufacture two shoes still i have to pay salary to employees still i have to pay rent for that plot of land which i have bought so certain variable and fixed expenses which i need to incur so what do we do now we divide expenses and the cost into variable and fixed element now as variable cost is directly related to your sales so sales minus variable cost help us in arriving as in contribution so contribution is what the profit which is actually calculated after variable cost now contribution minus fixed cost leads to ebit what is ebit earnings before interest and tax now to this ebit you see how profits are distributed from this ebit who will i pay the profit first i'll pay debenture holders or loan holders remember when you saw we have various sources of funds we have debentures we have preference shares we have equity shares we have retained earnings same continue whom will i pay first i'll pay the debenture holders or the loan holders in the form of interest so ebit minus interest helps us in arriving as pbt that is profit before tax interest is tax deductible so pbt minus tax gives you profit after tax next we'll pay preference shareholders in the form of form of preference dividend so profit after tax minus preference dividend help us in arriving as earnings available to equity shareholders so this is the profit table which we have and this is how profits are distributed at earnings to available to shareholders we decide how much profit is to be retained back in the business and how much is to be given out as dividend right by keeping our concepts clear let us see what is leverage all about Now, in this profit distribution table, if you see, what are the fixed elements do we have in a profit distribution table? If you see, we only have fixed cost and interest. Irrespective of how much profit, or if we earn a profit or not, I have to pay interest and I have to pay fixed cost. Right? The fixed cost has to be incurred, and interest need to be paid. This is what leverage is all about. Leverage actually focuses on your fixed elements in your capital structure. The fixed elements in the form of fixed cost or the interest payments which you can't ignore. So this is the risk which arises irrespective of how much profit I'm earning. I need to meet these obligations now. So what is leverage now? leverage has many people came with very definitions in short a very precise definition of leverage it's an employment of an asset or fund for which the firm pays a fixed cost or a fixed return now fixed cost is in terms of expenses fixed return is in the form of interest payments 
because of it only your risk arises in our business even if i go into loss i know i need to have sufficient reserves at least so that i can meet my fixed cost or i can pay the interest payments to the loan holders because of it risk arises in your capital structure or risk arises when you are raising funds as such and this risk is we call it as leverage so we can see in this profit distribution table we have only two fixed elements one is fixed cost other is the fixed return now what do we do now we divide this leverage into various parts depending on what fixed elements we have in a profit distribution you see we have fixed cost and interest fixed cost is actually covered in a type of leverage which is called as a operating leverage means day to day working of an organization your interest part is covered in a type of leverage which is called as a financial leverage so there are various types of leverage we have financial leverage operating leverage and compound or composite leverage when financial leverage we only focus on the risk element or risk part which arises because of your interest payments or fixed returns in operating leverage we focus on the fixed cost which arises because of normal running of an organization running of an production activity putting this leverage together i would like to know overall risk in my organization okay financial part is this much operating part is this much how much is the overall risk in my organization overall risk we find out as a well, compound leverage and that is what leverage is all about we'll cover one one type of leverage at a time what we'll do i'll tell you how the theoretical part what is financial what is operating and what is composite then we'll do a small illustration on it to make it more clear how do we actually derive at various types of leverage or the risk part so let us start with the first type of leverage we'll be seeing it what is operating leverage now let us see this profit distribution table first out of when profits are distributed fixed cost is the main element in your profit distribution which a fixed in nature right of which it leads to risk part so this part of risk is covered under operating leverage now what is operating leverage is the risk which is associated with your investment activities right now fixed cost and variable cost so how do you find out as your operating leverage now operating leverage we take into account is focusing as on the fixed cost take the profit before fixed cost take out the profit after fixed cost so we have contribution and ebit so how do you find operating leverage contribution divided by ebit so profits before fixed cost profits after fixed cost leads to know how much is the fixed element in the terms of fixed cost in your capital structure EBIT is also called as operating profit. So, how do you find out operating leverage contribution divided by EBIT? This is one more formula which we can use to find a degree of operating leverage. It is percentage change in profits divided by percentage change in sales. So, this method it takes into account the degree of operating leverage is a you can say is a percentage change in profits resulting from a percentage change in sales. So whatever, whatever data is given to you, what are data you have at a particular time or point of time, you can find out the operating risk in your capital structure. Now this is what is the operating leverage all about. The risk element in your capital structure because of your fixed cost. Now let us go to the profit distribution table again. After fixed cost, what fixed element we have in this profit distribution table? You can see is interest payments. These interest obligations are covered in the next type of leverage, which we call it as financial leverage. So, what is financial leverage? The financial leverage you can see the risk part because of your interest payment obligations or your financial obligations. The risk part arises. So, you can't. Tell the investors you don't have a profit, you can't give them interest. For example, if you take a loan from a bank, you don't use the loan also, you use the loan to the most profitable activity, the loan given is not concerned. He needs interest payments every year as it was decided at a time of contract. For example, Sahara. When the debenture holders gave them money, they didn't care where Sahara invested the money. They expected interest payments every year and they expected the principal amount after a period of time. Why the problem is Sahara? The company is not able to pay the interest payment. So this is a risk in the company. The risk limit is in the company because whatever, be the loss happening, be the profits happening, debenture holders are not at all concerned. They want the returns which they expected from a company. They want the minimum cost of capital at least. And this element we cover is in financial leverage. So what is financial leverage all about? It is the ability of a firm to use financial charges to magnify the effects of change in EBIT on the EPS per share. 
So what will affect at the end? This will affect the shareholders value. So she sees the change on the earnings per share. You saw in capital structure how earnings per share actually help us decide whether shareholders wealth is increasing or not, right? And this is what financial leverage focus on. It involves the use of funds obtained on a fixed cost in the hope of increasing the return to the shareholders. So what is the financial leverage? It is the use of long term fixed interest bearing securities like debt, preference shares along with equity share capital is called as financial leverage or trading on equity. So financial leverage only arises because of your fixed elements in your capital structure. Some people say that preference dividend is also fixed in nature. Preference shareholders also expect a continuous rate of fixed dividend up to your perception. If you want, you can include preference dividend also in financial leverage. Various people came with various pay, but some people say no preference shareholders are like the owners of the company, they are a shareholder. So for their payment is not a fixed obligation, but some people say, remember 8% preference share, 6% preference share, the rate of dividend is fixed. So leverage arises there also. Up to you, how do you want to understand? Some people have modified the formula of financial leverage according to their convenience because they feel preference dividend is also a part of financial risk. Well, let us see how do you find financial leverage now. Now, what? find out the profit before interest, find out the profit after interest. Go back to the profit distribution table, you can see profit before interest payment is called as EBIT, profit after distribution of interest is called as PBT. So how do we find out as this financial leverage is EBIT divided by PBT. EBIT is also called as operating profit, so operating profit divided by PBT. There is one more formula which you can use to find a degree of operating leverage, that is percentage change in profits divided by percentage change in sales. So purchase so percentage change in profits resulting from a percentage change in sales help us to find degree of operating leverage. So we are clear with financial, we are clear with operating. But you see there are a lot of differences between financial and operating leverage. Now operating leverage is associated with you investment activities of your company because of which fixed cost arises. But if you see financial leverage is all about financing activities. How do you actually raising money and when you are raising money we have to give a interest payment. Similarly, your operating leverage consists of your fixed operating expenses. Your financial leverage consists of your operating profits of the company. Now, in operating leverage, it represents the ability to use fixed operating cost, but financial leverage represents the relationship between your EBIT and EPS. The differences between how do you compute them is very important. For example, in operating leverage, how do you compute? Contribution by EBIT. Financial leverage, how do you do? EBIT divided by PBT. So, operating leverage also you can say differentiates because operating leverage depends upon the fixed cost and variable cost. But financial leverage depends more on the operating profits of the company. In financial leverage, financial leverage will change due to what? The tax rate and interest rate. They all impact as your financial risk. How much is the interest rate? How much is the tax rate? But operating leverage will not be affected by these factors. So, you can see the various source of elements which differentiate your operating leverage and financial leverage. Similarly, how do you calculate degree of operating leverage? How do you find a degree of financial leverage? Lot of differences over there. Like in financial leverage is also known as trading of equity. Trading on equity is possible under financial leverage. What is trading on equity? When you use preference dividend and equity together. But in operating leverage, trading on equity is not possible. So various differences between operating and financial leverage. Operating leverage focuses more on your day-to-day -day operations and because of which fixed cost element is there. Financial leverage due to the financing activities of the company. But when I want to know the overall risk on my company, Okay, financial leverage focus have a certain aim, operating leverage has a certain aim, but if I want to know the overall leverage, overall risk of my company, how do I do? I do it with the help of composite leverage or compound leverage. Now, for example, if I say the two companies, companies A and B, I would like to know which company is risky. I say in company A, operating leverage is high. In company B, financial leverage is high. Now I may get confused. Okay, one company is more risky from operating point. One company is more risky from financial point. It will not help me getting a correct answer, a correct decision. So what do we do? Then we rely on combined leverage or compound leverage. This composite leverage is just a, you can say, both of your financial leverage and your operating leverage. How do you calculate this combined leverage as your financial leverage into operating leverage? Now if you see what was operating leverage, contribution by EBIT. What was financial leverage, EBIT by PBT. So if you see how can you find combined leverage, contribution by PBT. Because EBIT, EBIT will cut itself. 
or what you do keep it simple find out operating leverage find out financial leverage multiply both of them and get as your composite leverage so what is combined leverage now when the company uses both of your financing and operating leverage it is called as a combined leverage now why does a company do that it use it to to see the change in sales for the change in your eps so remember shareholder value is the objective whatever you study so based on that we do is combined leverage as well there is one more formula by which you can do degree of combined leverage that is percentage change in eps divided by percentage change in sales so what is this degree of combined leverage is a percentage change in a firm's eps resulting from a 1% change in sales so based on that you can find out is a combined leverage as well so you see the various types of leverage the risk part financing operating and combined which is just a you can say taking into account both of your financing and operating leverage we'll do a small illustration on it to make it more clear how do you actually do financial operating and composite leverage <laughs> 